Alright, we might as well start. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I realise I'm just a little too high. There we go. Perfect. Okay, welcome, welcome. I am finally back. Tonight we are testing. So if you have a look down here, we've got Sneerpeach version 0.30.0, Release Candidate 2. <laughs> Bit of a backstory with Release Candidate 2 straight away. I um, uploaded Release Candidate 1, but for some reason um, it was 0RC1. And I was like, no, that's not correct. So I deleted it. And then I realized I couldn't um, reuse that name. And I just had more and more issues. So we're on release candidate two. So yes. Um, hopefully we won't have too many release candidates for this particular one. I feel like it's quite stable enough. We have found a few issues, which I do want to actually get fixed. So if we go over to our current issues, and sort by the priority. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six showstoppers. So one of the showstoppers is the organization information page has an error coming up. So we've got to solve that one. Don't know why that's happening. Interesting to find out what, what is causing that. Um, this is gonna be a quick and easy one. So we can't actually have usernames with an underscore in it, which is not what we want. We want to actually allow underscores in there. Um, I need to fix issues around testing. Uh, must be missing some data from migrations file. This one we can ignore. This is no longer a priority because we're no longer going that route. Um, no longer a priority as we are not. And this will be a won't fix. We are ignoring that one. Uh, another one which is really weird, we'll do some research tonight, is I don't have any, an overview on Near Beach's Docker, which I kind of want to implement. Um, cannot upload documents to Azure blobs. So at the moment, this is actually on Azure. So this is on Azure Web Services. We're using uh, Docker Compose to get running perfectly fine on the Azure stuff. But the problem is we don't have a volume to upload the data to. Um, so what we're, what I've got to do is I've got to actually uh, fix that issue and document it. I also need to document it if someone wants to do something similar on AWS, like if they want to run this in Docker on AWS, how can we get them to save their data to S3? So, yeah. All right, um, getting back to this, oh, and the last one, so technically the fifth one, I cannot update group settings which is really annoying. It's a good thing I found this by mistake. So if you need to rename a group or anything like that, it just won't work at the moment, which is rather annoying. Considering also you can't get to the admin either. So um, yeah, we're gonna have to fix that up. Oh, excuse me. So yes, that is what we're gonna do. So those are the showstoppers. So the showstoppers, um, we wanna actually deal with those showstoppers. Uh, so we also got 66 bugs, which we do have to verify are fixed in this release candidate. Um, and that would be great, knocking off 66 issues straight out off the bat. And then we've got, yeah, 25 more. And if we get to do it, 29, well, 28 more, get rid of the five. Yeah, we've, we're doing pretty good. We should be then knocking it down into just the normal ones. And then from the normal ones, we will, um, yeah, hopefully solve for um, the second release of 030. So I'm getting distracted with my cube at the moment, sorry. All right, let's jump into it. We're just testing today, so. 
Let's... So we know groups doesn't work. Let's change users. adding a random user in we're not going to save now we can't edit the username after the fact which makes sense uh, we've got the username we've got the ID we like how this is set up but we can edit the name and we can deactivate the user to so what I want to make sure is a deactivated user can't log in. And they can't log in. All right, cool. So if we go back in, is this user updated? Yep. Let's... Actually, I might've gotten the password wrong. Dom. Ah, uh, they're not connected to any groups or users or anything like that. If we log them out, cool, can't log in, which is what we want. And it looks like this page is working perfectly fine. So what we want to do for mission sets, let's just add in a um, random mission set. Uh, in this sort of case, I'm just going to go read only, and then I'm going to bump these up. Yeah, I'll add has permission for these ones. Gonna save, gonna refresh. So we should see read only. Yep, read only, read only, read only, read only, read only. It has permissions, read only. All right, cool. Uh, and then we just bump these up. And then has permissions, we'll bump down to no permissions. And edit only, no permissions, edit only, edit only, edit only, random permissions. All right, cool, I'm happy with this. Then let's add a couple of users. I will make it so that this page doesn't refresh, but for the meantime, it just will. All right, cool. And then if we team leader it, sweet. We can't delete anything at the moment. I think that is a bug. Let's actually have a look. All right. 
cannot delete permissions from user slash group. One log into message to search for an user. Three, edit to user. Four, remove a permission from the user. So we just got to program in that ability. So that is a bug. So priority, this would be a mage bug. Oh, you piss off. And hey, Dio guy, how are you? I hope you're going well. Uh, we are going to add in users and groups. That's this. You're not fine? Oh, that's not good. Why aren't you fine? Alright, so found one bug, we're happy with everything else at the moment under the admin section. Oh, sorry, I've been off Discord and all that for the last month. Sorry, no, I've just, I haven't been feeling well. Sorry, it's just me just getting better. It's a lot better now. Um, so yeah, I just got terribly, I got the flu, essentially. And it's just made me so exhausted for the last month. So I'm finally better. I'm finally have the energy, um, which is good. So yeah. You know, I don't think I can update profile picture. Cause I don't have a storage. Yeah, it's, it wasn't fun. Let's just say that. But I'm getting better. And I will get back to the mess uh, on Discord soon. But yes, yeah, sorry, I've just been not feeling well. Alright. So, do do do. How have you been at least? I am noticing something. You're not doing bad? Oh, that's good to hear. I am noticing that the background color is not solid anymore. But if you continue to practice one, two, three years or more, although you may improve some, you're liable to lose the limitless meaning of original mind. Mm. In the beginner's mind, there is no thought, I have attained something. All self-centered thoughts are Two seconds. I think I found a bug. Okay, uh, tables. Alright, so we've got a basic sort of table. 
I'm just putting this on light for the moment because I'm seeing. I don't know. Originally, that used to be a um, a different color. I mean, I could do this, the table group divider. But I kind of want this. Table light or table dark, eh? Let's switch that to dark mode. Go over here, let's refresh. All right, am I uh, doing that right? Is this just joking me at the moment? So now I've got to put a new class. I don't like the dark darkness in this. Um, I wonder why it's not doing the background color. Bootstrap has changed stuff. And hello, Sandy Lee. How are you? I hope you're going well.
So the problem is, if I wanted a different coloured header, like so, I'm going to have to place a class in every single one of them. Oh, it's not ideal. Not ideal at all. And for some strange reason, adding on a background colour here just does nothing. and sass to do that to override it it's yeah this is gonna be annoying all right all right let's find out what they say in the documents How do the uh, variants and accents tables work? Um, uh, yes, yeah, I've been ill. Um, so I'm finally back, finally not exhausted, so yeah. Um, terribly sorry. So yeah, these things happen. Um, to layer on top of any specific background color, it is used to castate to override box shadows regardless of CSS. Uh, when uh, all right, set to uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I'm hoping I don't get it that sick ever again. It's no fun. Um, that was just the flu. I haven't had my flu shot this year, which is my bad. Um, so yeah, I, some of the blame goes back at me. But yeah, it took me out horrendously. In this sort of case, I am we refresh. So I'm just selling my cube. What we want to do is we want to bang into here. We want to create a new element. So we want T head greater than TR for TD and then background color and then we want that sort of gray color so should be a um, I'm just doing that at the moment now that is automatically overridden so we want important so we don't want we want it more of a That sort of thing. Um, <coughs> but if I look at, let's say, a, a project, let's create a new project. Look at the table structures.
Now this will change. This won't be a table in the very near future. This will actually be a card. Um, pretty much similar to how the users will appear to... Oh, they appear already like that. So have these as cards. Um, yes, I've put the bug in about this. We'll also need to upload pictures and so forth like that. Documents are fine. Uh, we can add a link. Like so. That's fine. Linked objects. Uh, I don't think we have anything R uh, relates to yet. We'll just do. Um, the the box. Oh, I can easily answer that. Uh, so what has happened is this little div. I haven't pushed all the way over to the right. So the idea is that it is meant to be almost like this. This is just meant to be a couple of pixels to the left. So I do actually have that as a bug I found the other day and I did put that in. So I just got to do some CSS to make this work better. So yeah. I can also neaten that up a lot better. I can, yeah, I can make this look a lot nicer. Um, I might streamline it in it like this. And then customers. I'm trying to remember what I did with the customers. My stream like it like the cust I did the customers. This is a lot better. Uh, which just means I go back in here and just structure this better. Now I don't have any bug clients. Nor have I added in any tags at the moment. But that is fine. So and that is fine. So I think the bug list has the tables in it still. And we want to turn it into something looking like this. But I don't have any bug clients up and running at the moment. And this is the only table left. And I could make that background color. Oh. I could do that. But I'm not gonna bother. The other only tables that I know of are in the search. That took a while in here. Um, at the moment, I'm not gonna worry too much about this because we'll probably end up streamlining these to look as nice as what the, um, the relates to is. I don't know why I did that. Don't, don't ask me why I just did that. I was meant to actually do that. So I might um, make them look like this in the near future. So I'm not gonna put this down as a bug because this will be fixed up and streamlined. It, it may look a lot nicer. Okay, <laughs> so we're, we're finding objects really well. We've got projects which, um, Let's uh, change a couple of these. So add in a full stop here, add in a full stop here, and let's update. I should put this uh, starting in the future and definitely 
ending in the future. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I also want to test out the new code block. Ah, oh, I forgot. Um, let's just copy an example. Standard in and out. Ah. Yeah, yep, yeah. It's it's been a long time <laughs> for me since using C plus plus. Very simple. Let's see, hello world. I just want to see if this functionality actually works. No, it does. So I'm happy with that. Okay. Uh, let's add in a new task. Let's uh, remember how to see. I forgot how to see. Uh, this would be import standard in out .h. Ah, that was functionality I did not expect. And then we want to link this up. Subject, sub object of, so sub object of that, if we go to this, this will now state that is a parent object of that task. All right, okay, cool. Uh, yes, so when I say I know C, um, I learnt it in university back in like 2006. Um, it was mostly used because it was a lot faster than some of the other languages we were using. That's why they taught it to us. Um, yeah. And from there I got into C++ um, and all sorts of other different languages and so forth like that. However, it's been a long time since I've used C. Alright. So yeah. But I do currently use um, C Sharp. Okay, documents, uh, let's upload a document. Can't do it yet, but I'm just testing it out. Yeah, 500 error. It's because we have no space to put it. Um, so we'll probably have a look into that in a minute. Okay. So basic testing. Requirement item, what do we need to test? Uh, we need to test projects. Documents will work here. Assigned tags will also be the same. We notes. I do want to check one thing out, so I am just going to open this up as a different user. Am I as an admin user? Oh, I might have accidentally added myself as an admin user. Yes, I did. All right, not a problem. Team leader. 
Uh, that would be me. Except I spelled my name wrong. Did I click on add user? was weird. Team leader. All right, we have found a bug. I'm just going to paste this in. Um, user without super user permissions. Uh, cannot create new user. All right. Don't know why that's like that. I think I know what's going on here. So I've given myself administration rights, but I haven't given myself the ability to create new users. And what's happened is the system's like going, no, you're not allowed to do that. But it's not popping up the uh, modal to tell me that properly. So, uh, method log, log in to near page as a user with admin role, but without administration Django access. Um, try and create a user. This is where we got to think a little bit. Okay, so they've got specific permissions, but they don't have full permissions. Um, results. Uh, this is, this is weird. Uh, unknown expected results as, oh, and hello Memo Twitch, how are you going? Thank you very much for the raid. I hope you're going well tonight. Uh, what did you do in your stream? An unexpected results as the user should not be able to do it due to Django permissions. However, we should be notifying the user that they should user uh actually this is gonna be uh, i'm gonna say major for this one because there is a workaround for it uh the user just has to have their um permissions updated and this is groups and users all right um notes um, the work around is to assign the user administration access. Uh, yes, you track in jet frames. I did use uh, Bugzilla for quite a while. Um, however, I've ever since moving off AWS onto Azure, um, I've kind of migrated some of my services away from self-hosting where I can. Um, long story short, just easier, cheaper for me to manage all of that. Oh, this person is a super user though.
Oh, okay. Gonna keep that open for a minute. Can if I log out and log back in is the question. already a team leader actually I think this is this bug in itself is something different um, okay let's uh, I think it's I think this popped up because what actually happened is I didn't have the error modal in there. It's meant to pop up the error modal. Um, but yeah. That user already existed and it was an issue. All right. Error modal not existing in creating new user. I think, yeah, I think this is just as simple as that. So method one log into NeoBeep two navigate to the users create a new user create an already user expected results modal to pop up and um, notify user that that user already exists. Um, actual results, nothing exciting happens. All right, um, do, 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 oh, didn't want that as I had to, uh, just had one, I, and create. Anyway, um, thank you very much, Mimo. Um, for the raid. I don't know if you're still around or if you have to raid and run, which is fine. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. All right, getting back to this. Uh, I'm going to log out and go team leader. Now that was something I wanted to test out. Um, ah, I wanted to list tags. I want to see if I can actually create a tag as a normal user. So this would be um, new projects. Uh, actually, no, let's call it um, release information I, I don't know I'm making it just tag up and then what I should be able to do is I should assign this tag to other things So the good news is most of this stuff is working. Okay. Want to request for change to diet. But I do want to have a look at trying to fix one of these. So So at the moment, I I don't have access to an Azure blog to upload sort of uploads and like documents and so forth like that. So Azure Python blog. Let's have a look. I do know. I do know where 
there is something that will do it for us. I just gotta read up on it. So the Azure Blob Storage Client Library for Python to manage blobs and containers. Um, okay, we've got an Azure account with a subscription. Uh, storage account, we don't actually, we haven't made a storage account yet. And that's, um, we just would do that through the portal where we go to storage accounts. Yep, create, yep. And we just create something simple. All right, setting up, um, okay, create the project. So this will actually be in, it's got Azure Blob and Azure Identity that we've got to install. And then we've got that. So if I open up VC, I'm just come on over here. Thank you. All right, close that, close that. We want the, so we want near beach, we want the views, we want the documentation view. So we're already using Boto, uh, Boto 3, sorry, for all the AWS stuff. Um, this will be similar. So we just got to install those two and then this. So account container blob. Oh, sorry. Oh. All right. So we got an account. Yep, our head container and blob. Yep. Um, blob service, blob service. Okay, code examples. Oh, do I have to go through? Passwordless. Enables your app to use different um, authentication methods in different environments, local versus prod, without implementing environment specific code. The order, all right. Um, so. If it's the same as AWS, so AWS, I created a um, IAM account that only had access to that bucket, that S3 bucket. And then I used those login details to access that. And it was a very minimalistic sort of user. With very few permissions. All right, so when developing locally, uh, make sure that your user account that is accessing blob data has the correct permissions. You'll need storage blob data contributor to read and write blob data. All right, to assign yourself this role. Uh, now, in this sort of case, I don't want to be uh, assigning myself this. I want to be giving this to a um, other 
from a party. I don't want, in case, so those credentials get leaked by, sorry, let me rephrase this. I want to create a account that has the minimalistic uh, permissions. That way, if it is taken, that account, it only has access to the minimalistic sort of things on my Azure account. Um, I have Acrel's using Azure Portal. All right. So Azure Portal, access control. I am from the left hand menu. All right, sweet. And then yeah, I add in assignments. All right, cool. And hey, Nocturnal, how are you? I hope you're going well. This might be exciting news, but uh, hey, hey, I just wait, can you read? Yep, on stream, yep. 030 RC2. I had a funny story about RC1. So um, essentially when I uploaded my code, it formatted it so there was no hyphen between the zero and RC. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll just delete the, um, that off, uh, <laughs> off PIBI and, um, try and re-upload it. But I couldn't get anything with a hyphen or a full stop there. And I was like, well, looks like I'm on re release candidate too. Hopefully there won't be too many release candidates. Um, good news is as I was shaking this out, I haven't had too many issues which is great news. Uh, so the only sort of showstoppers at the moment, and there's only five of them. So one of them, the organization page has just an error popping up. Uh, another one is, I can't have an underscore in the username. Uh, another one is, I might need your help with this one, is I can't seem to put an overview on um, Docker Hub, but I'm hoping to fix that up very quickly. Uh, the one which we're fixing right now is can't upload documents to Azure Blobs because I haven't programmed that in and cannot up, um, you know, update group settings. So going good, only a couple of issues. Uh, you good. I just got a call with my manager, uh, talking about quarterly goals. Oh, nice. Oh, I've got to put this on. Terribly sorry. Stream profile. There you go. So much better. Okay, cool. So we've got to import stuff into here. So we'll find it handy. Um, Blob client, blob client, yeah, blob client. How do we log in? Is it asking me to do it? Oh, is it right there? Now I've just got to think where I would put this. Now, if I have a look over here, let's have a look what I do with uh, Boto. Boto. All right, here's the upload. So check user permissions, place the request post values, um, turn your 
All right, uh, create a new role inside to, all right. Let's upload the document that would be here. Um, save for that. Yes, so S3, Boto3 client. S3. All right, so we do a login here. And then we do an upload here. So what we want to do is we want to, if else if just after this and then we have a similar thing where it will upload the file so here would be our account details and all that kind of stuff all right what i'm going to do Gonna copy that document views P line. Let's uh, go in here. Let's write in there. Actually, let's let's edit this. Uh, potential method. What we want to do is we want to have that as header one. Uh, we want to put in our code. We just want to paste it in here. Python detected. Yes, that is correct. Uh, and then I want to get out of there. Uh, might be an idea where we use an else if statement above to determine if we have an Azure access key. Um, For reference, we're just using that. Copy this. We want the code in here. Uh, C sharp to fake that one. It doesn't matter. Okay, so account URL, storage account name, blog core, windows.net. So we'll have it like that. Credentials. Default Azure credentials. I <coughs> add this code inside try block when the code runs on your local uses the developer credentials of the prioritized tool you're logged into authenticate to Azure. Example of these tools. need a connection string. I might delete this code. The reason being is I think I'm gonna to have to use the connection string method. Um, we'll need to use the connection string method as it is not. 
Uh, we'll just leave it as that. So I'll save that. But I reckon it'll be very similar to this. So once we jump in, um, we log in, create a unique name for the container, or uh, create the container. We're not creating a container. We've already got a container. We just need to log in using these connection strings. Upload blobs to a container. All right, so create a local directory to hold the blob data. Yep. Um, uh, create a file, local directory to upload and download. All right, cool. Write to the text to the file. Yep, sure. Create a blob client, uh, blob service, get blob client. I don't know where it's telling us to log in. Let's create. Blob service, blob service client from connection string, connection string. All right. Perfect. So we get this connection string. All right. So I'm just saying this out loud. Um, what we'll need the person to do is with that connection string, actually hope, put it in the settings file. That will work perfectly fine. And then when we upload a file, upload blobs to container. So we do our whole thing. Then blob client equals blob client service, get blob client. Like so. Uh, with file equals upload path. That's that up there mode as data, blob client upload data. All right. Similar to this. So we log in with the uh, connection string and then we upload the file. Cool. And then we got to do download. So this is handle the file upload. Yep, 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 yep. Private download file. So when the, this is what is hit. So it goes through all of these conditions. And that's a 404. If it doesn't pass those conditions, uh, it gets the object or 404. It's a URL, it returns a URL. If S3 has been set up, so once again, we need to actually sit it in here. We don't need that print statement in there. So I can delete this and then it returns file body response. All right. And in this sort of case, download blobs. I just want to download one blob. Container, container name. Download blob two, all right. Yeah. So open file, download path mode. In this sort of case, we're not writing stuff. We're going to be uh, returning it. So as download file. So download file, write container. In this sort of case, I think we just need start of that with the read all and we'll have a file response return body as attachment true file name equals and then we'll have container client all right cool uh, 
So yeah, I think I know what I'm going to do here, which is good. Alright, anyway, I am going to be calling it early tonight. Sorry, I've just got to wake up early tomorrow. Um, and I'm still not 100% yet. So let's find someone to raid.